So I'm, I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Taurus Matthews, one of the directors of Interior Leather Bar, um, a, a very interesting documentary feature film that tries to reenact, if you can, if you can call it that way, um, a scene that was cut out of the original um, cruising. Mm -hmm. um, but you, I think you said that you that you've actually never seen those 40 minutes that were cut out of the original. No. One. But you were still interested in what might have happened happened back then in those 40 minutes and together with James Franco you started a project in which you asked uh, actors to participate in in it and just imagine those 40 minutes in a way. Well I mean we were interested in revisiting cruising for a number of reasons and one of the things that that, that stuck out to us was the fact that Friedkin had to shave off 40 minutes of the original film in order to secure an R rating mm -hmm. and um, on top of that, there's this whole mythology around these 40 minutes um, as to whether they've been destroyed, whether the studios buried them, or Friedkin actually has them like hidden in his vault of whatever he might have. Um, so those 40 minutes have never been screened publicly. I've never seen them, and I don't know anybody who's seen these 40 minutes. Um, but but you know the film is about a lot of different things and one of the things it's about is censorship and boundaries around sexual and creative expression and so that was one of the reasons why we wanted to look at the 40 minutes kind of as a launching point I mean mm -hmm. it's not you, you don't go into the film and sit down and watch 40 minutes of what we imagine those 40 mm -hmm. minutes to be it's more of the entree into us doing other things and it's it's much more about the process of making this film and then having these discussions around the boundaries that I'm speaking to and creative freedom, sexual freedom and then different different types of sexual orientations like there's straight men, there's gay men and they're sort of figuring out in the process of the film they're figuring out where their boundaries lie within um, within the film we're making and why their boundaries are there. Mm -hmm. <sighs> been set up around me and what that is is straight normative kind of behavior and it's fucking instilled into my brain and it's yeah I'd say you know it was a little shocking to me at first when I'm watching that but only I believe only because of the world around me because every fucking toilet paper commercial has a guy a man and a woman living in a house together and every a uh, fucking love story is a dude that wants to be with a girl. And the only way they're gonna end up happy is if they walk off in the sunset together. I'm, I'm fucking sick of that shit. So if there's a way for me to just break that up in my own mind, I'm all for it. And that's, I think, why you want to be an actor and be an artist. So how did this project start? First of all, how did, you, how did this collaboration with James Franco start? And where did it go after that? So, so James and I didn't know each other, and um, he he knew that he wanted to. Prior to meeting me, he knew that he wanted to revisit cruising in some capacity. He didn't want to do a remake, but he wanted to do something that was more of a nod to it. Mm -hmm. And um, he knew that he wanted there to be unsimulated gay sex in it, and he didn't totally feel comfortable. Um, taking the lead and shooting gay sex scenes, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. 
So he wanted to find somebody to collaborate with who, excuse me, he wanted to find somebody to collaborate with who had been using sex as a storytelling tool. And I had done this series called In Their Room that I still do. And I also had just finished a feature called I Want Your Love, where I had woven in unsimulated gay sex into the narrative of the, of the mm -hmm, film, mm -hmm. not, in a, and not in a way that was meant to be pornographic, but was meant to be part of the story and character development. Mm -hmm. So he had seen this film and um, felt that I would be the right person to collaborate with. So we got together and, you know, initially we just had this idea of like, okay, we're gonna, we were gonna do a nod to cruising and we knew there was going to be real sex in it. But um, beyond that, the first time that I talked to him, I had all of these questions for him that I knew everybody else was gonna have questions about, you know? And, and, and to his credit, he was, he was ready and willing to go pretty much anywhere as long as there was some smart reasoning behind what mm -hmm. we were doing. Mm -hmm. So a lot, a lot of um, there were a lot, of, there were a lot of interesting things in our first discussion that ended up being in the film. But as we were talking, we realized that a lot of the richness of this could be in the process of making this film. Mm -hmm. So we realized that on one hand, and then we also were both sort of discovering uh, these lost forty minutes, which I didn't know about. Um, and those two things kind of blended together to mm -hmm. make the film. Mm -hmm. And how did you actually meet? Or how did you hear about each other? Like how did... Well, I mean, I mean, I, you know, he's a celebrity, so I knew who James Franco was. <laughs> but he, but he, 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 heard, he heard about me because of my film, I Want Your Love, was doing festival rounds at the time. And um, I don't, some, somebody suggested that he look at that because mm -hmm. of the way I was using sex, and it was a way in which he was wanting to use sex um, for this project, but I think more generally this idea of, of this question, this larger question, which is addressed in the film as to why, why we don't see sex used more often as a storytelling tool as opposed to something that's just pornographic. Mm -hmm. And then also there's you know, there's, there's this different standards, too, in the types of sex. If, if, if it's a man and a woman, if it's two women, and if it's two men. And, you know, on the spectrum, it's much, you're much less likely to see anything graphic in, in anything that's relatively mainstream between two men. And you're much more likely if it's two women. Um, so those were things that, that we both, that I had been exploring on my own, and he was interested in exploring, and he discovered my work and thought we would be good collaborators on mm -hmm. this project. Mm -hmm. So who, what kind of community, what, you know, maybe also individuals, what kind of people did you have in mind during this film? Because I think after I watched it, that was the biggest question I had. Who was it addressed to? You know, like what kind of audience? Well, it's interesting because I think it's very much being framed as a gay film. Mm -hmm. I think it's very mm -hmm. much being framed as a, as a film for gay audiences, but I think that, I think it's, in some ways it but, is, yeah, but in but, some but ways it's, it's very much not. It's not, because I think and that we're, the queer audience or gay audience is, I think, very much used to a lot of these images, yeah, yeah, questions. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that it was oftentimes also for really, you know, straight identified people who, who need to go through this process of realization. Yeah, maybe. I, don't I, I think you know, the word I keep using to describe the movie is it's very slippery. It's very slippery mm -hmm. in so many ways as mm -hmm. to like whether it's fiction or whether it's documentary and sort of like the different boundaries that we're always addressing in the film. And I think this is another example where it doesn't quite fit as a gay mm -hmm. film, but it's also not, it's, it's clearly not just like a straight mm -hmm. film either. Mm -hmm. And it lives somewhere in between. And something that's been really interesting for me and that, that is a new thing for me is I'm actually getting a more positive and, and interesting response from straight men than I am from gay men from mm -hmm. the film. I can imagine. I where, can imagine. I can, yeah. where, where straight men are, 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 are revealing to me that they watched the film and, you know, these, these are usually already like liberal, liberal minded straight men, but they're realizing that they watched the film and it's made them reflect on their own kind of homophobia and where that rests and why it's there and, 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 and what to do with that. 
And, you know, to me, that, that's... There are a lot of things with, the, you know, when you make a film, you can only strategize so much, and especially when you're making a film like this that's mm-hmm. such a hybrid thing, that's such mm-hmm. a slippery film. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like we set out with, like, very, like, clear ideas of, like, we want to hit the straight men. We want to, you know, like, it wasn't really like that. So it's, it's, it's evolving, and, it, and it's, it's sort of playing out, and it's still early, so it's hard for me to make um, real solid uh, theories or um, statements about, like, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this in terms mm-hmm. of how it's being received and mm-hmm. talked about. But um, it has been interesting so far to see how straight men and women, I've actually had a lot of women come up to me yes. and, 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 and talk about in, in the most positive ways about their, their, their interaction and their engagement with the film. And it's something else that, you know, I have, I have various theories in my head that I'm hanging on to until I have more screenings to, to see if it exists mm-hmm. in, in, in a sort of broader sense or if it's within just the festival bubbles that we're in right now. How was it received in the States? And I don't know if, it, if it's different from the reactions in Germany. I think this is the first one in Europe you're playing, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there, do you like identify any differences? Or? Well, again, yeah, it's, it's, it's still a little bit too early for me. Yeah. And, and I'm also like right in the center of it right now. So it's a little bit tricky to, to, to suss all of that out. But it feels actually somewhat similar in that um, there's no shortage of opinion about the film. So, you know, I, I have people that are very much engaged with the film and, and feel like it brings up a lot of important and provocative questions that, that, that are ripe for discussion and debate. And, and I have other people that, um, that absolutely hate the film and, and think, are infuriated by the fact that um, the various things. There's not enough sex, or or James's involvement, or how he's a piece of it, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so it, it it runs a very polarized sort of gamut, which yeah, which I again, while I'm it. in the center of it, is sometimes a little bit of an onslaught. But if I can step if I can step back, yeah. um, I love it. You know yeah, what I mean? I love yeah. I love that people have strong opinions about it and and I love having conversations with people about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean that's what I mean it's such, a cliche, it's such a cliche but yeah but that's that's what that's what, what you want a film totally, to be, totally. right? Yes, yes. Um, but still since I mean since the Teddy Awards it's it's a it's a queer film prize. So the question is still I kind of stuck in my mind how the film might be important for the queer gay community. Uh, and what you know, we can take from it, maybe or learn from it, or is it, is there nothing? I mean, what, what's what's your attitude? Well, I mean, that? I think I think I mean, I think it's very much a queer film. You know, mm. I mean, like, and and I and I would say queer over a gay film because again, mm. going yes. back to this idea of it being slippery, yes. where for me, just the whole way in which it's structured in and of itself is very queer, and then the subject matter, you know, I mean. It, it, you know, there's there's gay sex in it, and there's there's much discussion around sexuality, and for me, you know, also one of the things that that makes it queer is that it's stepping outside of um, traditional confines of like of, of 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 what just a gay film is, because it's including it's including um, straight male sexuality in it as well gay sexuality and then it's stirring the pot mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. it's and it's not providing easy answers mm-hmm. it's opening up lots of different questions and it's provoking different people in different ways and in a lot of ways it's it's made it's made for the kind of polarized discussions that are having or that are taking place around the film mm-hmm. and um, for me that's that's pretty queer. Mm-hmm. It is, no, I, that's what I think. I think it's a very, very queer film too. And I'm also interested in how, I mean, of, of course, James Frank, he's, he's a celebrity and he's, he's very famous, but apart from that, what did he, or how do you feel, what, he, what did he learn? Or did he come to realize, because he, he entered this project with a certain goal, you know? I feel like in the mm-hmm. beginning, that, 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 that mm-hmm. gets very clear in the beginning when you have this conversation mm-hmm. and he, mm-hmm. he's quoting this Yale professor, you know, who kind of, 
open up his mind in a way of yeah. like questioning male sexuality in general and gay male sexuality. And did he learn something? Do you feel he, he learned something out of it or he got something out of it as, well, a, as a straight ident identified man? Well, I, you know, I'm careful not to be like, to be speaking for James's experience, but, but you know, like he says in the film, he feels like, you know, he's been brought up in this very heteronormative environment where every, mm -hmm. every message everywhere around us 24 seven enforces a, a particular model of living that is very, heteronormative and 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 for him I think he's constantly looking for ways to shake that up and looking for alternatives and looking for inspiration from other communities that, that who 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 are either um, who are either uh, showing or demonstrating an alternative to this to this sort of framework that he that he personally feels mm -hmm. that he's kind of confined to, um, but what did he learn from from the experience? Um, you don't know, because you're not, you're I, not, I don't, you're not, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And I, yeah, yeah, but yeah. also like as a, you know, um, as a collaborator, like if you as, as the two directors, you know, took something out of it or kind of, I don't know, did you talk about it? I mean, you probably talked about it afterwards or, you know, is there something that you both, I don't know, took out of it? If you know what I, mean. I mean, a lot of what I took out of it actually is 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 a lot of what I took out of it actually is is probably not not as interesting on the on the whole theoretical and, and substantive level, but more about the filmmaking level mm -hmm. because you know I I I'm I'm starting to do feature films now, and and often feature films take like one, two, three years or more to sort of actually go from inception and development to actually like being screened in a theater. And this project happened so quickly mm -hmm. that for me as a filmmaker, um, there wasn't the luxury or the curse to, um, to have a lot of time to, to plan and then to worry about choices or, or ruminate on choices that had been made. It was very much like we had to think quickly and we had to come up with a solid conceit. And mm -hmm. then um, mm -hmm. it was just like moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. And it all happened so quickly. I mean, it was like from the moment that he and I talked on the phone from the first time mm -hmm. until we went into production was less than five weeks. Wow. And then okay. the shooting of the film was only two days and then I edited the film in less than a month. So it was very much a fast process that was a very exhilarating process for me. And as a filmmaker, what was nice was to see that I actually can function well in such fast sort of... Hectic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, where, yeah. Where, where there's, again, not the time to really sit there and think like, well, if we do this, then that, then that, then this, what about that, what about that? Mm -hmm. It's more like, what's the best choice right mm -hmm. now? Okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. And then you just kind of move with what is the best choice in the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's exciting, and I, I like that piece of filmmaking, you know? And in, in my heart of hearts, I think I'm a documentarian. Mm -hmm. And so there was, a, you know, there's that whole piece in the film as well. And I think that I, I was able to lean on those strengths in order to just keep going at a fast pace with the film. Yeah. yeah. So what new doors did this, this project open up for you? Or wh where did it also lead you artistically, maybe, or inspirationally? Where, where, where are you at right now? Um, well, I, 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 so I do this series called In Their Room, where I go... You continue on... I'm sorry. And you kind of, I, it's so it's, it's amazing, because we, we went to your after, I went to your after party, and then I saw the, the beautiful, a beautiful friend Tobias, you, you shot him in yeah, Berlin. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just entered this, this space and I, I saw him, you know, beautifully making out uh, with, I, I forgot who we made out with, but yeah, it was yeah. amazing to, yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. to see that. Yeah, so it's, you, you go to different cities, basically, yeah. and it, like all over the world. Yes, yes, And yes, capture yes, yes. gay yeah. male sex. Yeah, well, and it's okay. not always sex. I mean, like, sometimes or it is. intimacy. Or, or well, yeah. the, the basic premise of it mm -hmm. is going into different gay guys' bedrooms in mm -hmm. a particular city mm -hmm. and usually shooting, like, between five and eight different guys and then, like, editing back and forth through, mm -hmm. through the particular episode. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, filming them do, doing everyday banal, kind of boring stuff in their bedrooms, but then also 
sometimes more erotic or intimate things. Mm -hmm. But I interview them about sex and intimacy and vulnerability. Mm -hmm. and, and often it's very, it's always very raw. And it's raw sometimes in a way that's very tender. Sometimes it's very funny. And sometimes it's very bittersweet. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's very sexy. Mm -hmm. And I've done an episode in San Francisco and in Berlin. And I just picture locked the London episode a mm -hmm. few weeks ago. So that's mm -hmm. going to be, that's, and on, on a lot of the, the festival circuit, that's going to be playing with interior. So that's something that's done that's about to come out mm -hmm. with that as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm, in, I'm in development on my next feature right now. Right. And um, it's, I don't want to say too much about it, but, it, but it's, it, the main protagonist is, is, is going to be a gay man with cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's going to be something of a slight pivot from the work that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. but, it, but but I but I think anybody who has seen my work will mm -hmm. recognize it as my work at the same time. Okay. So that's something okay. that I'll be shooting probably in the fall. And then we can expect it 2015, 2015? Sometime next year. Sometime next year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. For thanks this for having me. Interview. And, uh,